Hey, congratulations on your docu-series, Incredible Animal Journeys. Thank you. Most excellent. Um, I've I've watched a few episodes. I just love these type of uh these type of stories. But tell us uh tell us about your journey to create the this uh, docu series. Well, it's been a three year journey, gig. It takes a while to make these shows. Um, so we started back in twenty twenty. Um, it's taken in all seven continents and a myriad of animals. So we set out to try and tell the story of the greatest, the most incredible animal journeys across the globe. Um, and we also wanted to bring people stuff they hadn't seen before. So when we set out, we identified the animals that we wanted to tell the stories of, but then animals don't read a script. So you have to kind of follow what actually happens. Um, and as Mark will say, what we didn't expect was to secure some real world firsts in making the series, which are what you're always hoping for, but you never know that you're going to get. So we tell the story of humpback whales. They make the most incredible migration um, in the Northern hemisphere from Hawaii to Alaska to feed. And we capture the very, very start of that migration with a humpback whale birth that's never been filmed before. But at the same time, we uh, follow a barn swallow, a tiny bird, you know, smaller than your hand, um, who flies from South Africa to the UK to reunite with her lifelong mate. So it's a long distance love affair. And on the way, she has to battle um, a fish, a tiger fish that tries to leap from the water to eat her. She has to try and battle across the Sahara Desert, um, an area almost the size of the US, no water, nothing to drink, um, where sandstorms nearly put pay to her journey and then she has to fight um she fights on north through europe um having to fight off a bird of prey towards the end before she finally reaches home to try and reunite with her mate so there are there are these incredible stories these incredible journeys that are happening all across our planet every single day but we wanted to kind of put you right inside them um and follow them in a way that you hadn't followed them before so it's flying with the animals flying like the animals so if you want to know what it's like to fly like an albatross you need to watch the series wow yeah it's a it, it is a terrific series but you know when you first started this uh, three years ago, how many animals was on your list that you intended to actually film and how 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 many you ended up with with the series? I think um, you always set out, you always film more than you need, particularly for natural history, because you never know what you're going to get. So we do have, I think we have 127 days worth of footage. Um, I would say that the series is largely as it was conceived. So the main animal characters that you see in the series now, those are the animals we set out to film. Because what we did was we partnered with scientists and teams in the field to try and really understand and tell their stories. So we always want to tell the story of a humpback whale. We always want to tell the story of Christmas Island crabs, green turtles who make this incredible 30 year odyssey. Uh, polar bears, arctic foxes, caribou. So all those core characters, they're kind of who we started with. A few a few fell along the wayside, but that's because we had so much great material. We just couldn't fit it all in. They'll have to get us to make a second series. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, um the the story I love was, was the dung beetle and I and I always wondered like if if you just accidentally came across a dung beetle and just start filming it uh, out out in the wilderness that's that's why I had to ask. Oh, well, no, well, they, well we, yeah. we'd always intended to do the dung beetle because it has this amazing navigational ability. It uses the sun to navigate. So it um, it navigates in a completely straight line. It stands on its ball. It takes a snapshot of the sun and then it heads direct. So we always knew we, knew we wanted to film them. Um, but then we did on location come across one that basically rolled its ball of dung straight through the legs of a lion. <laughs> and so that became our dung beetle. And they're great little characters, aren't they? I mean... When the, the marabou stalk uh, uh, almost grabs it and it freezes instantly uh, um, until the, the, the stalk passes, it, it just sort of, you can root with the little beetle as much as you can with a, um, a swallow or a, or a pregnant caribou on, 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 on the epic migration. So I think that's so wonderful. It, it, it's such a small bog of delights. You're never quite sure who, which little character you're going to meet next. 
And and I love the storytelling um, through these uh, docu series. I don't know how how you folks uh, actually do it because it's 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 basically an emotional connection about family, and then all of a sudden you like twist and turn it into like dangers and survival and death. But that's the natural world for you. That is what happens. You know, you know, we we can write scripts all we want, but the animals, the natural drama in the natural world, you know, they they are. They are heroes in their own adventures. Um, and you don't, you sometimes you don't know what's going to happen next. So, for example, one of the standout moments of the series is a, a juvenile um whale, humpback whale caught in fishing gear. Um, and she's dying. She's clearly um in very ill health. She's emaciated, she's starving, she can barely um reach the surface to breathe. Now we never expected to find anything like that. We never set out to film it. Um, and it's a heartbreaking thing to film. And as Mark says, the, the, the um, a second whale, what amazed us was that a second whale came in and came to the aid of this humpback whale. And so we couldn't have written, we couldn't have written that as a script. We couldn't have written the moment where this whale lifts the other whale onto his back so she he can help her breathe. That yeah. is drama written by nature that we're just trying to showcase to you in the most amazing way. And it's a genuine act of kindness in nature. So we kind of think of ourselves as separate from nature and you're here you're witnessing an animal uh, demonstrating an altruistic selfless act purely out of fellow kinship for a passing traveler. Absolutely. And it, mu it must be hard for you to just to, uh, you know, like be a fly on the wall and just watch a lot of this kind of stuff unfold. I mean, uh, watching the episode about the elephants and the and the watering hole that 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 was also very tough to watch too it's really tough and i think as a natural history filmmaker you see this a lot is that kind of should we intervene shouldn't we intervene and actually if you watch our um seventh episode behind the journey which shows you how we made the series in that you'll see that with the entangled whale we actually worked really closely with noah who have a large whale response team their team tried to cut that entangled whale free we used our drones to show them um where the line was so there are moments where you do have to step across that boundary with the elephant the team watched the so with the elephant, uh, the baby falls into a water hole. It's a, a man-made water hole. It's very steep-sided. The mother goes in to rescue it. Um, we watch that event unfold in real time. It's your heart's in the mouth the whole time. Um, fortunately, that has a really happy ending. No spoilers. The mom gets it out. But um, yeah, it is. It's really hard to watch when when you're in the field because we shouldn't interfere with nature. However, we're humans and we empathize with these animals. And so it's very hard to know where that line is. Absolutely. And one, one last thing, why is Jer Jeremy Renner perfect to narrate? I mean, I mean, of course, you know, he has a nice soothing voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a real privilege to work with Jeremy. I mean, he brings so much to, to the story. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a masterful storyteller, first off, um, but his range of emotions that he can bring and impart uh, and connect you with with the animal stories is, is second to none and I, I he i'm sure he won't mind us saying this and that during that humpback whale rescue he he was choked up and even said afterwards it, it kind of brought up uh, um memories of his own journey that he's been through uh, um after his own his own accident so and 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 also he can do brilliant comedy as well he's a very funny man uh, and so he can bring pathos and humor and drama. Uh, so so I, I think it's just a wonderful tonal range and, and based on gravitas. And, and um, I, Sarah, do you want to say anything more? Yeah, he brought a real, I think for us, he brought a real emotional connection to these animals. Um, and you could see that as, and as he was watching them and as he was doing the narration, you could really see him connecting to these stories. And what we wanted was someone who had a sense of a life lived, right? It's like you you need that believability, that credibility. And I think Jeremy brings that and he helps connect the viewer to these stories. So yeah, real privilege to work with him. Well said. Hey, thank you very much for speaking to us about the incredible animal journeys for Nat Geo. You need a second season. I have to, I need more. Absolutely. That's, that's talk to Nat Geo about it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. Thank you.